Hi, I'm Tracy Spicer. The financial planning industry has been in the news quite a bit recently. Today I'm joined by Julia Blenkhorn and Perry Wilkie. Now they're two of the founders of the Now Financial Group, a group of independent Australian financial planners. They say they have a different approach to financial planning to the large institutional financial planning groups. I'd like to ask them a little bit about that. Hi, thanks for joining us. A lot of people are nervous about going to financial planners. Why is there a need for such a service, Julia? Well, for a start, a very simple analogy is, would you start a road trip without a road map? You know, you've got to have a plan and you've got to have a coach to help you get there. So we often get asked by people, by our clients, oh, you know, I don't think I need a planner because I don't have any money. Well, they're precisely the type of people that need a planner. Because to create wealth, you've got to have a plan. That's a really great analogy. Perry, why do you think there's a necessity? I, I, I think it's a journey and we, we, uh, we call ourselves life planners because it really is taking them on a, on a journey. And it doesn't matter where they are on the life cycle, whether it's starting off with our young kids and what do we do up to, like uh, a mother-in-law going into, into retirement and how do you do it? And I think it's, it's the, the issue with, with that is overcoming the fears and trying to, to break down those fears to actually do what they need to do. And we help them do that. And that's where that coaching, I think, Julia, you're, you're spot on with the, the, the coaching. We, we consider ourselves life coaches. life coaches. It's interesting, a lot of those fears are surrounding the sales-driven culture inside the big banks, which has been described as profit at all costs. What is the difference between a small independent firm like yours and the big institutional financial planning? If you come to a small firm like ours, you'll get advice, not a product. Um, all the big institutional financial planners are paid by how much they sell on volume. If you come and see us, you'll get advice which may not even involve a product. Somebody might come and see us and at the end of the meeting we're just doing some budgeting or some debt consolidation or setting up a savings plan. And more often than not, there's not a product involved. So the first meeting's all about finding out about their needs and their goals and then you come up with some strategies that may or may not involve a product. So the huge difference is we give advice. Yet the corporate regulator ASIC has recently delivered a damning report on the entire industry. Are practices changing? Absolutely, and they need to change. We've been doing the things that ASIC and FOFA regulations have been talking about for the last two years, for the last ten years. We've been charging fee for service for our clients. We've been acting in their best interests. We've been giving them a service, not a product. All the things that ASIC is now saying you know, a financial planner should be doing for their client, we've done for years. Perry, it must be incredibly frustrating being lumped in with the same group. It is. It is very frustrating. I, I guess when we're providing advice and when we know that 100% of our, our clients are coming from referrals, to be lumped in with the product providers is very frustrating because we're, we're actually providing that advice service and, and, and that's where our, our, our business is, is, is growing and coming from. There was a recent survey by, by Macquarie that, that actually went to clients that have, have an advisor and there was three key areas that they hit and that was that do they know and meet my objectives so are they thinking of the empathy the second was are they communicating and keeping me up to date with the, how am I doing on that journey and then the last one which was quite which is I guess what we pride ourselves on is priority are we moving ahead being proactive on, on what they're trying to do because you don't know what you don't know so you don't know what question to ask However, another survey, the Roy Morgan Researchers Image of Professions survey, showed only 25% of the population rated financial planners as either high or very high for ethics and honesty. How do you go about changing that image? I think that for our clients, they have a totally different image to that. When you're dealing with a non-institutionally owned financial practice, you don't have the same problems with ethics because we are going to be looking after your best interests. We're going to be asking what your needs are, what your goals are. We want to partner with you on a journey, your financial journey. So our ethics are what you want. They're not based in a product or in a certain area that our employer wants us to go in. We listen and really listen to what your needs are and help you get where you want to be. And I think to add to that, the clients always have control. 
one of the things that we don't take away from is control. We're a coach. Mm -hmm. So we're just leading them on that journey, helping them down. There's lots of different ways that you can go on that on that journey. We call it the submerged rocks. You know, you're gonna run into, there's never a straight straight line on how, on how you're gonna deal with it. So we make sure that we have contingency plans that help them along that way. So how does this look, say, for me as the customer? I think first of all, it's client, because it's a long-term relationship. It's not a transact. I think the biggest difference is that we're not transactional. You know, we're giving advice, so it's an ongoing, long-term commitment to each other. You know, a part of what I always say to my client says, we, we'll come up with a plan and we'll help you do it, but you have to commit to, to doing that plan with us. So it's a journey. And when you're, when you're entering into a journey together, there's your, your ethics or your, your commitment to each other to, to, to going forward. Yes, well, I mean, one of my most proudest moments was about a year ago when a client that I'd had for eight years, when she first came to see me, she was living at home with mum had no money saved whatsoever and was living sort of hand to mouth and she said, I want to buy a unit. And I said, we can do that. We just have to put a plan together. So we put a savings plan together and she saved in the beginning $20 a week. No products involved, just saving away. And every windfall she got, she put into that account and she saved a, sa a sizable deposit. And it was just fantastic having a celebratory drink with her last January as we walked over the threshold of her little apartment and she's so proud of herself. And in eight years, she achieved what she set out to do. And that's about partnering in the journey. You know, there's lots of shiny, bright things to distract us along that journey. But we just get back up on the bike and start saying again and start working towards our goals and then we achieve them. And that for me is just the best part of this job. That's gold. Speaking of this difference between paying for advice as opposed to paying for a product, the Financial Planning Association of Australia says, and I, I will quote, the gravitational pull of consumer demand cannot be ignored and will strip bare the stark difference between product sales and appropriate consumer-centric financial advice. Are you optimistic that this will happen? It's already happening. We're already there. Mm. I mean, what? What the FPA, and, and we're obviously strong advocates of the FPA and members, I'm a certified financial planner, so obviously a, a designation that's given from that. So we already have that code of conduct. We already have that built into our association. I think what we're trying to do and is to step it up, take it to the next, next level. The FPA has um, brought out a new 10-point plan where I mean, part of that plan is they really want there to be a difference between a product provider and a bank and a financial planner and they only want the term financial planner used for people who give advice and that for us is fantastic. This is what we've been doing for years and, and we're very pleased that the FPA is behind this. Yeah, so there's a clear delineation. A lot of people are concerned about the cost of financial planning. Why is it good value for money? Well, I think most of our clients would agree that financial planning for them has been great value for money. We certainly wouldn't work with anybody that we didn't add value to. Most of our clients are pretty excited about uh, the kind of money we save them or getting to retire earlier or go on those trips abroad that they wanted to do. So basically I think most people would agree that it's value for money. I'd agree with that. I think uh, another example is the fear factor is the legislative change and it's constantly happening. So in the latest budget, whether it goes through or not, we're talking about moving the retirement age out and that's a worldwide thing. So what are the strategies? I don't want to have to work till 70 perhaps, or maybe I'm happy to, but the, the, I want to be able to have those options to be able to do it beforehand. So if we're helping them on that journey, how do you put a price to say, I want to retire at 50 or 55 even? And, and so it's setting up, I guess we get lost in this how much, you know, and, and they talk about superannuation. Most of our strategies aren't just super, are they? It's, it's all the non-super strategies to say, well, if I can't touch it until I'm 65 or 70, how am I going to? If the age pension's not gonna be available, you know, I say to my children, don't bank on it. It just may not be there. At best, it's gonna be an insurance. So how do we ensure that you reach those goals? I mean, you can't put a price on longevity. And I think that's what we talk to our clients about is that longevity, we keep living longer. How can customers ensure an advisor is acting in their best interests? Oh, again, I think um, stories are a good way to illustrate this. We had a client um, some time ago now and went to visit them. They'd called us. They just wanted income protection. So that's just a life insurance product. He needed it. He was a plumber. He needed it to get onto a work site. We arrived at the apartment um, sitting on cardboard boxes, very heavily pregnant wife. 
and said, well, maybe we should look at some more cover for you, seeing you're about to have a baby and obviously settling down. And we had a discussion with him. In the end, he decided to take life insurance and then some trauma insurance, as well as the income protection insurance. And in nine months, he'd claimed on all three. He'd died. And he left behind a very young baby and new wife. She's still a client of ours now. And she believes very, very heavily in life insurance. And she said, you saved me from a life of hell. So she bought a little house in DY. And she was able to then bring up her child and work part time but she would never have been able to do that if we hadn't sort of had that discussion with her and was acting in her best interests. You know, we walked into a situation there where it was, they just wanted income protection, but really we uncovered what their best interests were to, to cover themselves for the unforeseeable. And for them, it was a very short time span, nine months. Extraordinary. Mm. It is amazing. Mm. And those are the stories that we have. That's Every what, day. That's why we're passionate. And, and why we're so lucky to be in an industry and a business that we're doing, that we're truly helping people. Mm. And, um, and it's very, very rewarding. I imagine you do a lot of good work around women as well, because every survey shows we're more nervous about financial planning. We don't have as much super as men. I'm very passionate about helping women financially. We find that we get quite a few clients through our doors who are in a mess financially that happen to be women just because of certain circumstances that have happened along the way and they don't know where to begin and they come to see us and we can relax them and make them feel that there is a way ahead and that there is a way out of this because for a lot of them they haven't had any financial background and they've allowed their husbands to do everything for them. They've been out of the workplace so they haven't been accruing super. So there's a whole lot of issues to address that we can do for them. I think part of that is also we're and our group is very much into the education. So we trickle feed and a lot of the a good client is an educated client. So mm -hmm. you've got to teach them and, and take them through it. And if they understand this is why we're doing these things, because you can't just say do it, because you're not going to. And I think that's where with women, because they may not have been the, the financial controller, except they wrote all the checks, of course, but in that particular situation of saying, well, how do I now make those decisions and feel confident about those decisions? And, and, and part of our role, I mean, I, I laugh that I studied a, accounting and economics. It should have been psychology <laughs> because that's really what we are as a psychologist, aren't we? Helping them yeah. feel comfortable to make those decisions that they actually need to make. Your great empathy for your clients really comes across in what you're saying. Why are you so passionate about this industry? This is the best job in the world. You get to take people to places they never thought they'd get to. And it is so rewarding when, as Perry says, they retire early or, or um, they... Buy the house. Buy the house that <laughs> they've always wanted to go on the holiday that they've always wanted. Or that they've got life insurances in place when their partner dies to look after their needs. So. We are. We're, we're blessed. Uh, you know, I, I get up every morning wanting to go to work and going to, to help people. I mean, how, how good is that to be able to actually assist them in achieving and not just them it's usually a family thing we bring the children in you know so as they grow up and as they're getting older you know, how we're going to do those things so it, it is it's it's a whole life thing isn't it, it, is. it it's and um, it is intergenerational it yeah. is intergenerational. we really encourage our clients to bring their children in so that they're part of their parents plan and also so that we start building a relationship with them well thank you for sharing your passions mm. perry and julia thank you, thank you.